So welcome everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in and participating today. We have the lovely webinar by Dr. Dan. We will continue to join him for his webinar after in about 18 minutes when we have the release of the U.S. trade balance and the U.S. unemployment claims. Now right here you can see the anticipated forecast according to a number of economists surveyed by Bloomberg as well as the forecast uh, of the U.S. unemployment claims also surveyed by Bloomberg. These are the two most high impact news for the U.S. dollar today. Now right here you can see some of the trends that we have uh, that the indicators have been experiencing. Now the US trade balance, trade deficit widely widened mildly in August. No, sorry, sorry, Aslam Hamad. This is actually the US dollar, US dollar trade balance forecast. Now the US trade deficit widened widely in August, reaching 38.6 billion US dollars, following 39.15 billion US dollars in the previous month. In the light of these figures, it is unlikely that trade will boost GDP in the third quarter. Economists expected a bigger deficit of 39.4 billion. The three-month average of the trade deficit fell to 37.3 billion US dollars and the three months to August from 39 billion US dollars in the prior month. If we talk about the US unemployment claims right here, what we can actually see. We can see that the number of Americans filing initial claims for employment benefits fell 9,000 to a seasonally adjusted 3336k last week rebounding to pre-recession levels the reading was in line with market forecasts lowering the four week average to 348k the low level applications indicate fewer layoffs but hiring slowed in recent months instead of accelerating what are again some of the forecasts and what are some of the experts are saying what can we expect and anticipate Yes, yeah, so you can see here are some of the economists, the firms that they represent. There we go with the summary. And uh, we have right here as well some of the data. Now you can see again, these are the some of the economists that were polled by Bloomberg regarding the U.S. trade balance forecast as well as the U.S. unemployment claims forecast. We can see that the average estimate already is uh, 39 U.S. billion dollars, high estimate being minus 37 billion U.S. dollars, with the low minus 41.6 billion U.S. dollars. And with regards to the and with regards to the U.S. unemployment claims, the median estimate is 330k. With the so with the discrepancy is uh, really not that such a uh, still 25k give or take. Well, still could have an impact on the markets. Uh, to so we will have the release already in about 14 minutes. And just to talk a little bit about the technicals, I would now like to welcome uh, Thomas onto the whiteboard. Hi Alex. everyone. But it's Tom. No, it okay. will be me. Uh, right. Okay, my slides are gone once again. This is awesome. So let me then turn on the screen sharing for a second. I have it there. Uh, so what you're seeing is United States dollar Japanese yen. And um, and and one minute chart with the main technical levels highlighted. Now let me put, to find first of all, of course, uh, my webinar tech levels. Uh, right, let's zoom in. So yeah, as you can see, well, first of all, I will be presenting about regarding the positive uh, unexpected positive impact of the market news so let me just double check what is going on right so we can see the period has recently uh, touched 99.87 which use was actually if I recall correctly no not the daily low but uh, 
I guess it shouldn't be here to be honest. I uh, made a small mistake. So daily R1, well it touched basically weekly R1. We see uh, that the next major technical level way below, like 30 pips below it is uh, uh, daily R1. So um, uh, let me see, adjust a little bit my trading strategy. Not my trading strategy, but the possible. Uh, trading strategy and which I will put on the slide in a second. Uh, so what I will be presenting is possible trading strategy on the positive outcome of the news and therefore uh, appreciation of the pair. So it assumes that the, you will be able to buy uh, at market and uh, put the take profit around uh, 100.114 uh, in this case you'll see that would be daily R1 in our chart let me zoom in a little bit to make it a little bit more clear what is going on so uh, in my opinion after a positive news that will be coming out the pair might uh, jump as high as daily R3 at 100.11 uh, for uh, however, we need to pay significant attention to the fact that um, I guess I should highlight the news itself it's coming out, right? Uh, so we should say significant, but should pay significant attention to the fact that a major support resistance at 100 Japanese yen is actually uh, uh, just, if I recall correctly, uh, yeah, six pips away. So it definitely will cause some pressure on the pair and mood, uh, mutual will overall effect. Uh, therefore, uh, daily R3 actually in a sense would be uh, something like a long term, uh, a longer term, let's say 10 to 15 minutes after release of the news target. Whereas major support resistance around 100 Japanese yen should work out as pretty good uh, short term. Either, well, even if it's six, six pips, um, employing some leverage, of course, you will definitely will be able to gain significant returns on the pair. Now, uh, daily and weekly at the same time, high need to adjust a little bit. Around 100, uh, 043 would actually would be great medium term target, as it is around 10 pips away from this one. I mentioned daily R3 is actually 17 pips uh, from the current. Uh, market price and the next one which we're having is actually around 60 to well 60 to 70 pips away from the current market price which is a little bit too uh, too far away in my opinion just to, to bet solely on the impact on the pair uh, right and uh, stop loss plus well I put stop loss on 99 uh, 75 as it uh, should have some psychological effects on traders being this semi-major number let's put it that way uh, that way right as uh, actually for the past I guess 10 minutes a uh, normal trading range minute trading range seems to be around three pips uh, somewhere in these ranks and uh, first major uh, support area is actually weekly R1 at around 99.89 and that's just four pips away so in case the, the market news actually come out worse than expected there is too high of a chance that um, weekly R1 just will be touched due to uh, the market mo market noise not solely on the effects of the uh, of the release of the data uh, therefore, it might, let's say, neutralize or take away some uh, very profitable, profitable uh, trading opportunities. Therefore, well, if you feel a little bit more playful, you could uh, put stop loss at daily R1 with 99.567, right? However, it is um, as well maybe a little bit more medium term target as it is around 35 pips away from the current market price. Uh, so that being said, let's take a look at the technical indicators. First of all, uh, 10 minute chart, well, 10 minute technical, so now you get pointed further depreciation of the pair. Uh, however, there was been gone whole, well, some sort of 
uh, bearish movements on the pair whole day, so it might have some influence on the rune and SAR. Uh, indicators about uh, further depreciation of the pair, both being trending indicators, uh, where stochastic actually shows that the pair being oversold, sort of uh, providing additional boost for it, right? And on aggregate, actually on 30 minutes and one hour, we see that substantial uh, support for the pair is present there. So we're having, uh, just to conclude, right, and give floor to my colleagues, actually it's just we're having slightly uh, interesting situation due to the mainly 100 Japanese, the proximity of 100 Japanese yen. And this, uh, well, in my opinion, technical indicators giving slightly more bullish outlook on the pair. So yeah, now I guess I will leave all of these technicals and possible trading strategy uh, trying that. Oh, I forgot to mention that I chose this pair uh, due to mainly market sentiment indications as Japanese yen being sold in 61% of the cases, the state dollar being bought in 55% of the cases, but market sentiment on the cross of these two uh, currencies being really, really strongly bullish as 75% of traders hold long positions on the pair, expecting further appreciation uh, of the pair. So that being said, I guess that will be all from my side and I give floor to my colleague Sasha uh, to carry on the presentation. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. Hi, everyone. And today, as your open guest, I will be discussing the possible trading strategy in case of the worst than expected uh, data from the United States. And as you can see, here is a possible trading strategy based on the Australian dollar and greenback currency pair. And the main reason for choosing this exact pair is strong bullish market sentiment, and it's currently more than 70% of all open positions. And actually, even though the greenback is, if I recall correctly, bought in 55% of all cases, traders' attitudes towards the Aussie remains to be bullish, as the Australian currency is bought in 74% of all cases. And meanwhile, the other reason for choosing this exact pair that even uh, in case of the better than expected data, the pair is unlikely to fall below the strong support line around 92.58. So, and a possible trading strategy could be an entrance point at the market price and placing the take profit at 93.39 and a stop loss at 92.58. So it's a almost eight pips range between take profit and the stop loss. Taking account technical indicators, uh, the only interesting point about them, it's uh, the fact that on the weekly chart, they are sending we, uh, buy signals, suggesting that in the longer term, the pair is likely to appreciate However, as you can see on the medium and short term, indicators are sending rather uh, bearish signals. And speaking about the analysis with the greenback, uh, as you can see, in most of the cases, the pair is bought. When speaking about the major currency pairs, including uh, dollar, Swiss franc, and Looney. Uh, however, as I already said, the attitude towards Australian dollar and greenback is strongly bullish, meaning that the pair can appreciate in the short term. And now let me turn on my screen sharing just to justify my trading strategy. So a couple of seconds more. Yep, and I hope everything is working currently. Just a second. One more second. <laughs> yep, and I see that everything's working fine. Yep, and as I already said, the stop loss could be placed around 92.56, and actually that's a Fibonacci retracement and the monthly support at this level. And moreover, they also placed uh, daily support and four-hour support, so a bunch of support lines around this level, meaning that it would be extremely difficult for bears to push the pair below this level. Uh, as to the take profit, it's it on the level of 93.39, and actually that's the uh, key level in the nearest future. And as you can see, bulls were expect, experiencing some difficulties in the past around this level. It's at uh, four bulls. At the 30 minutes chart, we actually see quite a similar situation. 
and the Paris currently trading from the key level of 1992.78. And as you can see, there was some choppy sessions around this level. And it's uh, approaching currently weekly support at 93.01. So just three minutes left before the news release. And let's have a look at the minute charts. Perhaps something is already happening on the market. However, as you can see, the markets are rel relatively calm at the moment. Yeah, and by the way, uh, I guess you probably know that Australian dollar and greenback was one of the most bullish currency pairs so far this year. However, after reaching a high of, let me double check, it's 0.582 on October, the pair began a period of uh, depreciation and actually the pair is depreciating since until now. Yeah. But after uh, reaching a low of 90, 88, sorry, 41, the pair began to appreciate once again, and it's currently approaching a strong uh, level of 95.11, represented by Fibonacci retracement and the 200-day simple moving average, meaning that it could be a key level in the long term for the long traders. And once again, in case the 50% Fibonacci retracement will be breached, then it would mean that the pair will continue appreciation uh, and will once again the strong Aussie will pose some uh, difficulties for Australian policymakers. Yep, so just two minutes left before the release. And as you can see, there's still nothing interesting in the markets. And by the way, it's United States dollar Japanese yen, also one minute chart. And so if I recall correctly, Thomas' strategy was to place a stop, uh, sorry, take profit run above 100 level. So as you can see, here is the level, and it's higher above the current market price. Yeah, and by the way, speaking about my trading strategy, uh, if we place, yeah, take profit around the daily period, it's 40 pips above the current market price and the uh, stop loss is placed over 40 pips lower than the market current market price. So that's the time is approaching. Yeah, so and the initial market reaction is slightly it was both trade balance actually. minus 41 8 billion. And unemployment so, claims a little worse, as I see. 139k. Yeah, so both indicators are worse than expected. Then we can expect uh, some bullish momentum on the Australian dollar and uh, green, green back here. And currently the pair is rising more than 7 pips. So nothing significant so far. Yeah, but as you can see, the pair has already reached the today's high and the daily pivot and the weekly support at 93. So, but the market traction so far is quite moderate. Oh, and if we we'll have a look at the United States dollar and Japanese yen, then the pair fell uh, lower than nine. Yeah, it was two days low. Yeah. And counter trading around 99.88. But once again, nothing seriously happened uh, happening on the Australian dollar and United States dollar. So, but nevertheless, when being based on the fundamentals, we can expect the appreciation of the pair and the retest of the daily period at 93.39, as it was said earlier. Yeah, that's. Have a look at one more candle on the minute chart. Perhaps we'll see some more impressive reaction. Yeah, but nothing serious and interesting so far. And it's just Ellen Pips movement. So yes, and 
to sum up once again the recommended trading strategy in case of the negative market surprise and it's what we're seeing right now is the retest of the daily pivot at 93.39 and the recommended stop loss could be placed around Fibonacci retracement and the monthly support around 92.56 and I guess that will be all from my part and back to you Dita. Thanks, Alex. Now, I just would like to maybe, if Dr. If Dr. Dow, what are your thoughts uh, on the latest release? Just if you could share your views, we'd be very happy. Yeah. Yeah, the numbers were uh, relatively bad across the board. When you look at product productivity costs, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, what was the other one we had come out? We also had out uh, the trade gap. Uh, that has been you know, slowly moving down anyway on charts. I think I saw Thomas have a chart on it a, a few weeks back, maybe four or five weeks ago. It keeps on sliding out at the same time. We got hit with three different numbers throughout this uh, this last 10 minutes. And, you know, it, it, the numbers are very, I guess, we, what we used to call leaky, like a rowboat. You know, it's not sinking, just kind of leaky. You know, it's just, you know, it's got water coming into it mildly, slowly, but... Overall, there's not a lot of positiveness. They're they're trying to find positive, uh, you know. Uh, I I hate to use the word spin. They're trying to find positive because that's what the the discussion. This is all leads into the concept of tapering at the same time. Because what's happening is that if we can we can if we can see the Federal Reserve, who we assume has the best numbers that anybody could look at, then if they would taper, then we would assume that some of these numbers are a sign that the economy and productivity and employment are moving in a positive direction. And when we see the numbers here this morning, they just show us that we're really going nowhere. We're just going sideways. Uh, I don't know if anybody has seen the story from the uh, fellow, fellow who was in charge of buying the uh, trillion dollars worth of bonds for the, uh, the QE, how he came out and apologized two days ago. Hauser, he wrote, wrote a, uh, an apology letter to the in the Wall Street Journal, and they had him on... Uh, CNBC didn't take them serious yesterday. Bloomberg gave them a little room. But pretty much these numbers constantly re repeat everything we're seeing, and that is the economies are all anemic, and they're not going anywhere. And it's all sideways action. And these numbers here just reflect it. it wouldn't, if the numbers had been better, you know, I mean, we need real numbers. We need real leaps. Uh, half, we need to see 350,000 down to, you know, like 220,000, not... Not eight thousand up or down, you know, and that's but that's pretty much what the problem is at this point. And as traders, all we can do is keep on trading and look for an advantage and uh, and try to save. Uh, and last the uh, last thing to say about it is is that uh, some of the money managers in the United States are now coming out claiming that they're keeping between thirty nine and forty percent of their capital in cash. Uh, and this that started off with uh, Think at BlackRock, which is probably one of the largest funds in the planet. I think they manage four trillion dollars. And so uh, these numbers constantly reinforce the fact that we're not really going anywhere. It's uh, it's unfortunate. We're just going sideways. So, Gita, that is unfortunately the view from here. 